Okay, and if I continue on to number 28, it says here, find g prime of 1 and use it to find an equation of a line. Equation of a line, that's the easy case. And the reason that's the easy case, that's y minus y1 equal m into x minus x1. What's missing is always the slope of the line. That's the story of everything that we do. If I want to find the slope of the tangent, I have two formulas. Either I use the limit as x approaches 1 of f of x minus f of 1 all over x minus 1. Or the slope of the tangent would be the limit as h approaches 0 f of 1 plus h minus f of 1 all over h. If I decided to use this, that's the limit as x approaches 1. f of x is x to the fourth minus 2 minus f of 1. You could throw the 1 in there and get 1 minus 2. Or you could just copy that point over x minus 1. That's the limit as x approaches 1 of x to the fourth. And wouldn't that be minus 1 over x minus 1? So I'm going to alternate on those. That would be the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 1 into x squared plus 1. And I'm going to factor it again and take x minus 1, x plus 1 into x squared plus 1 all over x minus 1. Those cancel out. If I throw the 1 in, I'll get a 2 times a 2, which is a 4. Put a 4 in there. There's my answer. You could, if you want, I think the back of the book. So for the homework, maybe you do want to simplify it. Uh, maybe you want to write it in point slope form. In slope intercept form to match the back of the book. But this is a fine answer. There's nothing wrong with that. And you could do that on all the problems. Next problem. <laughs> Sketch the graph of this function. Let's see what we know. It says here that a g of 0, so when x equals 0, when x equal 2, when x equal 4, y is 0. Those are actual points. 1, 2, 3 points. The graph must pass through. It says if you take the slope of the tangent at 0, that's a negative 1. If you, I'm sorry, that's a 1. Slope of 1. If I draw this rectangle, right, make it a square, rise 1, run 1, that's what a slope of 1 looks like. So at 1, the slope of the tangent looking like this, and at 4, it looks like that as well. It says here also that the slope at 2 is negative 1. Well, isn't that negative 1? Something that looks like this. The limit as x approaches 5, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4, and let's say that's 5. The limit as x approaches 5 from the left is infinity. That means the graph runs up this way. And the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right is negative infinity. Okay, we'll try to sketch a graph that's coming up from negative infinity, which has a slope of about a 1 and about a negative 1 and about a 1 and run it all the way up. Wouldn't the graph, wouldn't this be a possible graph? Of course, there are many other graphs. I mean, many, you know, this could be stretched up or down a bit. You know, you could go up higher, lower. We're not going to disagree on that. But it should look like that if you stand far away from it. All right. And this is 1 over x squared. They want us to find the slope of the tangent. I'm going to take f prime of a to equal the limit as x approaches a. I'm going to use f of x minus f of a over x minus a. You could use 
either or they didn't specify f of x is 1 over x squared 1 over a squared over x minus a this is a complex fraction the LCD for the top and the bottom combined is a squared x squared this is missing a squared this is missing x squared and this is missing the whole thing and if you ignore the denominators and just read the top that would be an a squared minus x squared and the denominator would be a squared x squared into x minus a that would be the limit as x approaches a and that would be a minus x into a plus x over a squared x squared into x minus a and if I cancel those I'll pick a negative one they're opposites and since I have room I'm gonna write it out otherwise I would have just plugged in x equal a and figure out what that is and if I throw that in that's negative a plus a over a squared times a squared that would be negative 2a over a to the fourth that's negative 2 over a cubed another problem I want to look at is number 36 and on this one I'm gonna take again it doesn't really matter you could use either or I'm gonna take the limit as h approaches 0 since I did that on the previous problems the other definition a plus h minus f of a all over h that's the definition that is going to stick with us when we get to the next section so let's get it out of the way 4 divided by the square root of 1 minus a minus h minus f of a oh, that doesn't look like f of a 4 divided by the square root of 1 minus a all over h that is the limit as h approaches 0 a complex fraction you're gonna hear me say that a lot that's 4 the square root of 1 minus a minus 4 the square root of 1 minus a minus h over h times the square root of 1 minus a minus h square root of 1 minus a that's gonna be the limit as h approaches 0 and that's gonna be a 4 into square root of 1 minus a minus the square root of 1 minus a minus h and nothing seems to be cancelling out so what I have to do can you guess if I throw h equals 0 and I get 0 over 0 multiply by the conjugate and now the tough part is the dragging you gotta drag this with you the top will clear in two steps hopefully we're comfortable with that the denominator you have to write it at least once h times the square root of 1 minus a minus h times the square root of 1 minus a times this mu okay now for the top I'm gonna get the first squared minus the second squared and if I clean that up this would be 4 times this is 1 minus a minus 1 plus a plus h those two cancel out and those two cancel out and if I cancel this h with that h the top will have a 4 left over the denominator if I put a 0 there and a 0 there I'll get the square root of 1 minus a times the square root of 1 minus a times the square root of 1 minus a plus the square root of 1 minus a that would be 4 divided by this is simply 1 minus a and this is twice the square root of 1 minus a and if I divide that by 2 I'm looking at 2 divided by 1 minus a times the square root of 1 minus a the book might write that as 1 minus a to the 3 halves that's not a big deal right that's the same thing on the last problem they want us to go backwards so pretty much what they're saying here hey 
each limit represent the derivative of function f and at a number a tell me what f is don't find it tell me what they are so tell me what f is and tell me what a is here i notice they're using the definition of the limit as h approaches 0 of f of a plus h minus f of a all over h here i notice they're using the limit as x approaches a of f of x minus f of a over x minus a and here i notice they're using the limit as x approaches a same as the above except here i notice they use theta so maybe we're looking at theta approaches a f of theta minus f of a over theta minus a so first equation f and they're throwing evaluating a 3 plus h so you're trying to think okay what what do you replace a plus h in you don't know what a is yet to get 2 raised to this power i claim that would be 2 to the x exponential 2 raised 2 to the x and if you throw in a if you throw in a 3 let's see would this be 2 to the third if i throw the 3 in there 2 to the third is 8 that checks here i could read a easily it's right there i really don't have to do much work on this it's a bit easier to figure out a in the first piece is pi over 6 and in the second is 1 fourth very simple and they have in this definition f of x right there I don't have to do much work in this case and here I have f of theta is the sine of theta and there it is that's all you need to do and if you were to apply this definition you would notice that you'll get those three there's the homework listed the homework is on page 113 do that homework and that would be the end of this section